Hi guys, can you see the screen? Yes. Yes. Okay. What about that? Uh, we were talking mission statement. What is purpose? Purpose. Purpose will describe why does business exist for and what is the purpose behind? What is the aim behind? What is the main strategy behind the organization? Similarly, strategy and policy and value will depend upon the purpose will depend upon the aim of the organization now strategy what is strategy strategy will describe what does the business provide how is it provided similarly policies and culture how does the business expect its staff to act and behave similarly if you want your organization to follow the aim to follow the objective then you obviously want your organization the staff to behave like that so that you can achieve that aim similarly what will be the values values are the core principles of the business that's how whole of the organization each and every one of the organization will work accordingly why because you want the, uh, every one of your organization to uh, collectively follow the goal follow the aim of your organization so that you can achieve it if everyone will know about the mission if everyone will know about the purpose strategy policies and values then everyone will follow it accordingly it, it, there is no need to be uh, that mission statement should be uh, quite lengthy or all that it should be simple it should be it should just be explaining the purpose it should just be explaining the main aim of the organization like we can take an example like uh, honda example mission statement uh, honda's mission statement explains maintaining a global viewpoint we are dedicated to supplying products of highest quality yet at a reasonable price for worldwide customer satisfaction this is just the mission statement it will explain it is explaining that you are going to provide the worldwide uh, worldwide uh, providing your product worldwide customer will be looking for you and you are providing what is your aim you are providing the products at reasonable price how simple is it so that's how a mission statement is i think it's quite clear is, is there any difficulty in it no Finally, uh, I uh, ask everyone of you to please respond accordingly so that I may know each one of you is clear or not. As yes. I told earlier in my previous class that we are not face to face, so we have to interact to know that you guys can understand everything. So is it clear? You can, if you don't want to reply uh, through voice, you can, uh, you through audio, you can reply in the chat box. Okay, thank you guys. Okay, as we are talking about mission statement, so we described aim and objective. So we, we will further explain how could be the aims be, how you should define your aim, how will you explain your objective, so we have a word smart explaining that objective explaining the purpose your aim your objective should be smart now what is smart each every word of smart will explain one thing your aim smart your aim should be smart whereas s will be explaining that your aim should be specific what what does that specific mean specific means that your objectives are well defined and understandable why is it required because as we described earlier that in the mission statement you want every one of your organization to follow it you want every one of your organization to achieve the goal to achieve the aim to achieve the purpose of the organization so if your aim will be specific enough it will be well defined explained to everyone it is understandable to everyone then each one of the uh, person of your organization will be able to achieve it similarly m describes measurable can achievement of objective be measured so that completion can be confirmed 
obviously if you are going to uh, you going to have some aim it should be achievable it should be kind of that that each one of the organization is able to achieve that is able to measure the completion so that all the organization works accordingly and you achieve your aim next is attainable attainable and measurable can be related we can see objectives that will be achieved with resources and skills available if you know what is your aim what is your organization why you are here why you are here for that or you are why you have opened that organization then you should know that are you quite enough you have quite enough of resources available or not if you have enough resources available enough skills available that will be the reason you will be able to achieve your objective last last part of the smart will describe okay we missed one which is r r will describe relevant Now what is relevant? Relevant means is that objective is relevant to the people involved and to the mission of the business. Uh, we also studied this point in our uh, qualities of good information. So you can relate these all of the things. If you know, if you are no, uh, if you are talking about information, you should provide the information which is uh, quite relevant, quite. Uh, understandable to the person who receives it in a same way if you know the aim and objective of the organization and if the person as the people of the organization know that what are the pros and cons of this all of that if you know the achievability if you know the measurable uh, contents of the uh, aim of and objective of your organization that's how you will be able to achieve it last but not the least is time are the deadlines being set for the objective that are achievable that means you know that if you want to achieve some, something what is the timeline in how much time period you have, you want this to happen you want all of your organization to work accordingly so that all of the people of the organization work in a way that you can meet your deadline so your aim and objective should be smart that means it should be specific measurable attainable relevant and timed these are journal terms uh, i hope it's clear do you have any problem any one of you do you have any problem That's no. good. No. That's good. And Shrutha, thank you, Devina. What about rest of you? It is clear. Okay, Devia. Thank you. Thank you, Gitega. so the last and the main point which i already explained is why we are going to know that our aim should be smart because we want goal congruence what is goal congruence goal congruence is if you want whole of the organization to combine at one point if you want all of the people of your organization to achieve all the departments all the centers all the offices and all the people all the employees to achieve a single goal the how how it will be possible if every one of uh, every one of the organization will be working according to the same goal according to the same deadlines same objective same aim so that that is why the smart hierarchy is required because you want to achieve the goal congruence okay that's it now uh previously in previous class we studied that uh, data is converted into management information and 
uh, into converted into information and then it is converted into management information and afterwards you use that information to uh, in planning control and decision making of your organization so uh, we need to be clear about these words planning control and decision making what what is planning how you differentiate planning from decision making what is control how do you differentiate all of these words for that purpose we we will look into uh, these words one by one now management information uh, what is the purpose of management information we also told that in previous class that management information helps your managers help the people in your organization to manage the resources manage your resources in a way that you can use them effectively and efficiently why again for planning control and decision making so what is decision making how will you differentiate decision making from planning and controlling if an if examiner asks you a question he gives you a statement then how will you know that this is this statement relates to decision making so you should know what is a decision making decision making is a choice between the alternatives what is choice between the alternatives if you have option a and again you have an option 2 you will know all the benefits all the pros and cons of both options and then you will choose the best possible op op option best uh, alternative best option which will help you which will achieve your objective now choosing the option choosing out of these two options choosing one option is your decision you are taking a decision similarly if you are going somewhere from one city to another city you will have different options you can go by train you can go by bus you can go by uh, by your own car you can go by plane you will look how expensive is going by car how expensive is going by plane or some other factors you will consider and then you will you will choose one option choosing one option out of all these four options if you choose by going by car then you have taken a decision so what is decision making the decision making is choosing between the alternative it involves a choice between the alternative again one more point uh, we cannot say we uh, we studied in previous class that organization has different management levels it's higher level middle level and lower level so uh, is it necessary that decision making is only done at higher level is it any one of you want to answer is the cn making is only done at higher level anshuta is saying no kitika is saying no so uh, what do you guys think anshuta and kitika do you guys think that the uh, cn making is at all levels obviously you can see it on your screen but still i want to know what's your opinion so you guys saying that the cn making is at all level as you can see it obviously you are seeing it you will say like that okay it's okay okay management uh, we uh, we studied that there are three levels of management higher middle and lower level so the cn making is at all the levels everyone at their level is taking some decision it is not necessary that only seniors will take the decision yeah the higher management will make major decisions we can say that uh, lower management will take a, a shorter decisions or we can say smaller decisions but everyone in the organization at some point of time are taking some decision so management can take the decision at all levels it is not necessary for one level they are taking the decisions at all levels similarly some decisions could be planning decisions whereas some decisions could be controlling decisions that's how it it is differentiated some people will be taking uh, decisions which are 
which are uh, because of their controlling measures whereas some decisions will be will be for their planning purpose but everyone in the organization at some point of time is taking the decision so management at all level is taking the decision secondly it's what is the decision making it's a choice between the alternatives and what it helps you it helps you to reach a informed decision what is an informed decision informed decision is a better decision so if an exam if examiner gives you a question it gives you a statement uh, saying about someone in the organization or some manager in the organization is taking is choosing between the alternatives is has uh, or or the manager has two or more than two options he's selecting one of the options then you should know then this is your decision making as i told uh, that decision making can be at all levels it is it can be long term it can be short term and long term will define that it is a major decision it is a strategic decision and obviously if it is a major decision if it is a strategic strategy decision it will be taken by a senior management level longer term means it it will be more than one year it its time span it decision time span will be more than 5 years or if we can say more than 10 years or more than that because it is a longer term the decision will be on major plan now what about shorter term as the cn making is at all levels we talk about longer term now what about short term short term means it could be within one year and as it short term that means it is operational operational means it is day to day decision in an organization you have a major decision you have to make suppose you have to know that you what is uh, what you are going to do in 5 years what you are going to do in 10 years and afterwards to achieve that 5 year or 10 year plan you convert it into smaller decisions smaller plans so that's how you can you can differentiate between longer term and short term now take some examples of longer term decision longer term decision could, could be a branch opening you can open an overseas branch that is a major decision that cannot be taken by the lower management opening a branch similarly you are going to launch a new product that is also a major decision that cannot be taken by a lower level of management and higher level of level of management will do that if you if you're going to uh, have a new loan then it is a major decision now what will be the operational decision examples of operational decisions could be uh, suppose uh, how much inventory you are going to hold how much material you require for your production what will be the time for your labor will there be an overtime or not that that kind of decisions will be your operational decision so can you differentiate between longer term decisions and short term decisions is it clear what decision making is yes yes okay thank you now after the decision making next point is what is planning as we discussed that decision making is a choice between the alternatives then what is a planning is planning is a really common word every one of you might know what planning is if you know you are guys uh, you guys are going to join uh, you going to start acca you will uh, plan you will plan accordingly you can take some uh, other examples also if you if you are if you are, you if you are going to uh, attempt your exams in few in few months then you guys should you guys should plan accordingly you should guys know what time line is available and how you will study so that you can achieve the uh, objective what is the objective you will pass the paper so that is your planning planning is how will you plan your resources so that you can operate successfully in future 
for that purpose in an organization you make budget you will plan accordingly what are the resources available what could be the material available what could be the labor available similarly what could be the other resources available what could be the cost factor included and accordingly you will see that how will you you utilize these resources so that you can operate successfully in future in budget you will consider all the factors which are required to achieve your objective to achieve the goal of your organization now what is control when you make a uh, when you make a plan you think about or you uh, you think about all of the factors all of the resources available you make a budget so that you you may know how to operate after that you implement that so you if, if you implement the plan is is that all thing is that finished no after that you have to continuously compare you have to continuously see what is the actual situation and what was you have estimate what was the estimate what were the estimates in the budget if there is any deviation then you will see what are the reasons if the reason controllable or the reason uncontrollable so what is control control is comparing the situation actual happening at which is actually happening and what you have planned you will compare continuously so that you can see that you are going in line with your budget in line with your plan if there is something which is uh, which is uh, which is not allowing you to go You, you, which is not allowing you to achieve your objective then you have to see are those factors controllable or uncontrollable what is what that means controllable means which which can be controlled by your organization which can be controlled by certain manager what is uncontrollable means which cannot be controllable by a certain manager what could be the controllable factors suppose uh, you had you had options of three suppliers your manager did not bother about that and he selected the supplier which is giving the higher price then this is a factor which is controllable whereas what is uncontrollable factor uncontrollable factor could be that the prices have uh, there is inflation in the market prices have risen everywhere so you cannot control it so what are the factors which are controllable you have to look for those factors so that you can control them so that you can correct them before something bad happens so controlling is comparing the situation which is actually happening with the budget with your plan so management puts action plan plan of action into operation there need to be some control over the business activities to ensure that operations are in line with the budget that's what controlling is is everything clear about planning control and decision making yes clear yes what about rest of you okay anshuta thank you okay good okay that's good so if you guys have understood all of these points then there is a question in front of you you have to attempt the question you there are different statements you have to read the statement and accordingly respond whether this is planning statement controlling or decision making statement each one of you take 5 to 5 5 minutes and uh, you can send me your answers in chat box statement you can write it statement 1 is planning or decision making or control similarly statement 2 statement 3 statement 4 and statement 5 so uh, guys just take 5 minutes and reply me each one of you should participate
Okay, I'm getting answers from you from your side. Um, I got answer from Devina. Uh, Usha, Usha, am I pronouncing your name your name rightly? Usha, is it right? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Uh, Gitika, and what about uh, Divya and Ashuta? You guys did not reply. Divya and Ashuta, where are your answers? Um, I cannot see the answers. You have to send me answers according to what you think about it. Okay, Ashuta, I got your answers. Divya, you have to you have to uh, select whether each of the statement is about planning, control, or decision making. You have to send me your answers in chat box. Okay. I'll just wait for Divya uh, when she will answer. Then we will discuss about all of these options. Okay, I highly appreciate each one of you. If uh, while you guys are relating the CM making at some step, I highly appreciate that. Because as we studied, the CM making can be at all levels, so it can be combined with some other options, which is planning and control. Now let's see what are the right options. Okay, now let's see what are the right options. Statement one is saying preparation of preparation of an annual budget for a cost center. So if you are preparing a budget, then that means you are planning something. So preparing an annual budget is your planning, but the CN making is also part of it because we know that the CN making can be uh, the CN can be of some planning level. It can be some planning decisions. Similarly, it can be some control decisions. Next statement is saying revise budget for next period. Now, what is that? Uh, when we implement the plan, afterwards we continuously look into it whether the plan is going in line with the uh, plan or not. If it is not, if there are a lot of deviations, then we look for the factors. And if there are a lot of deviations, that we have, with, there's a need for a revised budget, then you, we, will make, we will do that accordingly. So making a revised budget for the next period will be under the heading of control, but it will also include some decision making. Similarly, when you implement decisions based on information provided, then what is this? Is it a planning option? Is it a control option or what is it? It is only decision making because what are you doing? You are taking a decision, you are implementing something. You are choosing between some options and selecting one option and implementing it. Then that is your decision making. Now, next option is set your organization objective for the next period. Where do you set? In which point of your uh, plan in your cycle, you, uh, you select the objective. You set your objective in your planning options and your planning uh, uh, strategies. And then afterwards, if we, if we look that you are planning something, you are taking some decisions as well. Again, if we compare actual and expected result, what is it? When compared, when we're comparing plan with the actual situation, plan and the expect, uh, expected results and actual results, then it is your controlling and if we're talking about controlling, the CN making is also there. So the CN making is at all the levels. This, this question was purely for you guys to understand that the CN making can be of planning and can be controlling, but it can be at all levels. Whereas you can have planning as well, controlling as well. Is it clear? Is it clear guys? Yes. Yes. 
Yes. Okay. Thank you. Now the next point is, what would be the levels of planning in an organization? As we studied that in an organization, there are some people who are running the business and we call them manager. We know that there are levels of management, level of managers in some organization. How we'll define these levels? We can say there are some higher level, some middle level and some lower level. As we talk about higher level, it is about strategies. It is about the higher management. It is your strategic level. If we talk about middle level, it is your tactical level. And what about the lower level? It is your operational level, which is which is involved in day-to-day -day planning and control. So at every level of organization, uh, if you're talking about high level, you will having some strategic planning. If you're talking about middle level, you will, you will be doing some tactical planning. And if you are talking about lower level, you will be doing some day-to-day -day or some operational planning. The higher level will be making major plans Time span will be five years or more than five years, 10 years or longer than that. And middle level will convert that uh, major uh, plans into some smaller plans. And afterwards it will be converted into yearly plans so that you can follow it. So as we are talking about uh, levels of the management, we should know what kind of information is required? What type of information is required by each level of the management? As we know that there are three levels, higher, middle, and lower. As the middle and lower level is mainly involved in the, the, more, the more calculations, more estimates, more workings, then they will be required with detailed information so that they can have information from all about all the topics and they can calculate something, they can create the estimates and they can then refer to the higher management to take a decision. So higher management will normally be required with summarized information, whereas middle and lower level will require some detailed information as they're involved in uh, all of the functions, all of the calculations and all that. You can also prepare a triangle from your uh, from your levels of management. We can say the higher level, level, mid, middle level, and the lower level. You can also say them strategic, tactical, and operational, as we discussed earlier. Now, after uh, studying the different levels of management, different levels of planning, you have a question in front of you. The management accountant has communicated a detailed budget to ensure that cost saving target are achieved in the forthcoming period. What could be the answer? What would be the option out of the four, four options, which is operational, tactical, strategic, and business planning? Each one of you should reply in the chat box. What you guys think, what could be the option? Is it option A, B, C, or D? I got the answers from Anshuta, Devina. What about rest of you? Oh, 
ओके दिव्या वाई दिव्या इज थिंकिंग अबाउट ऑप्शन सी एंड वाई गीतिका इज थिंकिंग अबाउट ऑप्शन सी वन बाय वन यू कैन आंसर दिव्या वाई यू थिंक इज ऑप्शन सी because the the aim is to save cost so they have devised a strategy to a, to be able to attain this cost saving targets okay what about gitika gitika why you think it's strategic planning Yeah, can you hear me? Kitika. Yes, then why you think it's option C? Why you think it's a strategic planning? okay what whatsoever is in your mind you can uh, you can uh, write in the chat box as well okay kitika has nothing to say is it Kitika do you have to say anything Sorry for asking me again and again but I have to do that because uh, as I told earlier uh, if we will if we will not interact uh, it will be quite boring Okay Okay so most of you said option B which is the right option um, I appreciate the right answer from you guys but it's okay if you are thinking something else it's okay at least you have something in your mind if you you have some reasoning in your mind okay management accountant has communicated a detailed budget to ensure that cost saving targets are achieved in the forthcoming period this is the main point of this statement as this statement is describing that you are preparing a budget which is a, a, which is a, which is for the next period that means you are converting some major plan into a shorter term plan that means that could be done by a tactical planning that is a tactical level manager uh, work where a strategic decisions are major decisions are longer term decisions for uh, for more than 5 years or 10 years or more than lo or longer than that but um, as we are talking about a forthcoming period that means you are converting some major uh, plan in major budget into a shorter plan so option b is the right option is it clear is it clear guys yes okay kitika are you clear yes okay okay now next topic is responsibility accounting now what is responsibility accounting as we studied that there are different levels in an organization then each manager will be given some responsibility and you will you will have you will have held that manager accountable according to that If if a manager has responsibility, certain responsibility, then you will ask him about that whether he has fulfilled that responsibility or not. So what is responsibility accounting? Is responsibility accounting is identifying the individual parts of the business which are which are the responsibility of a single manager. That means that single manager will have a certain responsibility, and you will ask him whether he has fulfilled that responsibility or not. 
then what could be the centers? What could be that individual parts of the business which an organization can have? That individual parts will be called as responsibility centers. Each has a different responsibility and each responsibility center is a function, a department of an organization that will be headed by a manager who has the right responsibility for its performance. So what could be the responsibility centers? You can have a cost center in an organization, a revenue center, a profit center, and investment center. As we said, that each of the center, each of the part of the organization will be responsible for their performance. That means cost center manager will be responsible for cost. A revenue center manager will be responsible for revenue. Similarly, profit center manager will be responsible for the profit and investment center manager will be responsible for the investment. It's quite easy, I think. Is it? Okay, now we will look into each one of them one by one. What is a cost center? As I described earlier, that cost center is a part of an organization. You can say is a department of an organization which is only responsible for cost. As we said that this department is only responsible for cost. That means this department manager will be responsible for cost. That means the information which will be circulated in that um, uh, center in that department will be about cost. Everything will be about cost. So what is a cost center is a function, production or service location. It can be an activity. It can be an item of equipment for which cost can be accumulated. Now, what could be the cost centers in an organization? What, which are the departments in an organization which are only incur cost? They don't uh, generate some revenue. They're only incur cost. Can you name some of them? Any one of you, can you name some of them? The maintenance department. Sorry, which one? The maintenance department. Maintenance department. Okay, what about anyone else? Procurement section. Sorry? Okay, okay. Now we had, we can say that in an organization, if you're talking about a cost center, there could be some, there could be some production cost centers. And some service cost centers. Production cost centers will be those centers which are involved in production in manufacturing, whereas service cost centers will be the centers which will be involved in providing service to the production cost centers so that so that they can complete their so that they can accomplish their production. Uh, maintenance department is an example of a service cost center. Store department is an example of a service cost center. Whereas production cost center can include if you are if you are uh, making something, manufacturing something, then an assembly department, a finishing department could be a production cost center. Whereas if you are, uh, you can take another example, if you take an example of a bakery, then in a bakery, uh, you can have a mixing department, a baking department. All of the, these will be your cost centers. Each, each the, your manager will be responsible for cost you will only incurring cost and from making something, manufacturing something. So cost center is any section of our organization to which cost can be separately attributed. If you take an example of bakery, it can be mixing department, baking department and store department. So cost center can be production cost center and service cost center. It should be clear in your mind that it could be production cost center and it could be service cost center. 
so as we uh, uh, told earlier that a uh, call center could be a department it could be a function that depends on the organization how larger is the organization how smaller is the organization if it is a smaller organization or uh, uh, equipment or uh, can be a call center whereas if it is a uh, uh, if it is a big organization that a department can be a call center a department as we uh, studied in a bakery example where the machine can be a cost center whereas if a project we can uh, say that installation of a computer system is your cost center now similarly if we describe what is a revenue center a revenue center is a function is a production is a servicification is an activity an item of equipment for which revenue is earned similarly just like a cost center a revenue center can be a department but here we are talking about revenue so if we talk about revenue we cannot talk about revenue solely if we talk about revenue cost is there is it cost is there so we can say that if we uh, held responsible the manager of revenue center for revenue then he will also be responsible for the cost and what could be the revenue centers revenue centers could be any your branch any your area any your uh, any uh, any kind of your department or branch which is selling something which is earning some revenue so my question is a uh, will that manager will the manager of the cost and uh, sorry the revenue center will be responsible for cost or not if we say that our revenue center is only uh, is, is only the department which is involved in the selling activity is only that regional branch your area where you are selling something and you are generating the revenue will that manager will be, will be responsible for cost or not anshuta what about then profit center don't you think in profit center uh, the profit center manager will be responsible for cost and revenue because we are talking about profit in revenue we are so we are solely talking about revenue yes if we are, so so we can conclude that in a revenue center you will not talk about you will not have, you will not hold your manager responsible for cost you will only hold that manager responsible for revenue because you are solely you are solely related to selling activities you are solely generating a revenue you are not talking about cost why you are not talking about cost because you are not making anything you are just selling that thing so you are you are, you are just responsible for making that sale pro, sale possible so your manager will be responsible to achieve that sale target if we have a target of selling some 100 items or 1000 items and if he if he has achieved if he uh, has achieved that target that, that's it so or there is no there is no cost item in that so in a revenue center the manager will be responsible for revenue only is it clear yes okay now profit center so as i described similarly just like the cost center just like the revenue center profit center is that part of the business is that department who is responsible for cost and revenue both because we are talking about profit how we calculate profit we deduct cost from the sales from the revenue that means if we are talking about a profit center manager he will be responsible for revenues he will be responsible for cost the so profit center is any section of an organization to which both revenues and costs are assigned so that the profitability of the section can be measured just like the other uh, centers 
we can have an example of a sale division selling products to the customers local branches in a regional and nationwide distribution business any center which is responsible for the profit whose manager is responsible for profit he has he should be responsible for cost as well now if we talk about investment center investment center is a center who has additional responsibility why we are saying additional because that investment center will be responsible for your investment but with the investment uh, what we uh, learned earlier we said uh, investment decisions are major decisions and are taken by senior management is it did we talk talked about it earlier did we said that yes so investment center or investment decisions are major decisions and are these these decisions are taken by senior management so if senior management has a responsibility of investment so apart from looking for, looking into that that whether that in investment went well or not that manager will also be responsible for cost and revenues and profits and all that that means investment center will be higher in the hierarchy is it so investment center refers to the center who has additional responsibility of capital investment and for financing it could be your any branch anywhere cost centers will collect information on cost as i described earlier revenue center will collect information on revenues but not cost profit center will collect information on revenue cost and ultimately on profit similarly investment center will collect information on revenue cost and profits apart from that investment so if you arrange all of them in an hierarchy you can arrange them you can see that you can have a investment center at higher level why investment center at high level because investment decisions are major decisions and mostly taken by the higher management so if investment center is at higher level we can say a profit center can be at the middle level that means in a investment center there can be more than one profit center similarly under a profit center you can have more than one cost center and more than one revenue center so is everyone clear about responsibility centers and responsibility accounting and their hierarchy is everyone clear guys are you clear okay okay ashurka devya good what about rest of you Usha and uh, Devina, are you clear, guys? Uh, Ma'am, why yes. are there uh, two profit centers at the middle level? It, uh, I, uh, as I told, that investment center is a major center, is a higher level. investment center is a department similarly profit center is a department so you can have more than one department so that put to as profit centers under an investment center so it is not necessarily two it can be more than two but it can be more than one profit center refers to a department which is responsible for a profit so you can have more than one profit centers under an investment center similarly you can have more than one revenue centers and one more than one cost centers under a profit center Am I clear? Okay, ma'am. Thank you. As we talk about an, if we talk about an organization, there are not only there is not only one department in an organization. They can have more than one branches who are responsible for 
profit similarly you can have more than one uh, manufacturing department which are referred to as uh, production cost centers you can have more than one service cost centers which are responsible which are called as service cost centers similarly you can have more than one revenue center so it is not necessarily uh, required that you have only one profit center that depends upon the size of your organization the longer the 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 more um, big your the, your organization is the more departments you will have is it clear uh, usha yes clear okay good okay now one more point uh, we need to discuss is as we are discussing about management accounting this is the subject you are you will mostly discuss about cost accounting management accounting uh, these these terms are used interchangeably so we have to see what are the differences between uh, management accounting and financial accounting so we will look into some differences what could be the differences what could be the areas of comparison um, what are the primary users in a management accounting as management accounting is is your man is is part of your management work so the primary user of your management accounting is your internal management whereas in financial accounting your primary users users will be your stakeholders people who have interest in you who have some stake involved in you they in financial accounting is for external reporting whereas man management uh, accounting is for internal reporting so as it is uh, it is for internal reporting then it will be more part of your internal management whereas financial accounting you make balance sheet balance sheet and you make income statement for the purpose of the stakeholders to see whether you are profitable or not so financial accounting is for your external users for your stakeholders whereas your um, management accounting is for your internal management as we said that management accounting is for your management is is about your management then rest of all the things will depend on the management report format will depend on the management as there are no hard and fast rules of management accounting it depends on your management what could be the format of your report each organization can have a different format similarly as financial accounting is based is is your financial is your reporting is your external reporting and it is based on your accounting standards it is followed by law so you have to follow those accounting standards similarly again a management accounting is as part of your management is depend is dependent on your management so it is it is not required by law it all depends on your management whereas financial accounting is legally required you have to present your statements to show whether you are profitable or not so what kind of information management accounting will use information can be future why future because we make estimates we make budget so you have to make estimates that means you use future information whereas historic data is always there whereas in financial accounting you only use historic data and you show that what you have done in the previous year and where you stand now frequency of report how many times you have to produce your report in management accounting it all depends on your management as it's uh, it's 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 all it's not required by law it's all upon your management what is the discretion of your management whether you make your uh, reports monthly or annually it all depends on you, on your management whereas in financial accounting you have to make your reports periodically what is the purpose of your management accounting as we discussed earlier it, the purpose of your management accounting is planning control and decision making whereas in financial accounting you have to show how you are performing what is your current position uh you have to show this in your balance sheet and your income statement so financial accounting is all about that whereas management accounting is all about planning control and decision making uh nature of the information in management accounting it's financial information it's non financial information you consider all the factors whereas uh financial factors or non financial factors qualitative or quantitative factors you consider all of them whereas in financial accounting the, it is mostly financial is it clear
if it is clear then uh, uh, if if it is clear then there is a question in front of you just take 2 to 3 minutes and read the statements and um, choose the right option and kindly each one of you respond in the chat box Okay, I'm getting your answers. Um, some of you are saying B, and some of you are saying A. So, Devana, Devana, only you, uh, uh, you is you are saying A. Uh, so, may I know what what you're what you're thinking? Why you think it's A option? Why you think both options are correct? Okay, it's okay. It's okay. Okay, so it's quite clear. The statements are number one is purpose of management accounting is to provide accounting information to managers of the business and other internal users. So this statement is correct. Management accounting is to provide accounting information to the manager, is it? And to the internal users, as we discussed, that management accounting is about the internal management. for the internal users now second statement is uh, management accounts are only concerned with cost of goods services and operation the word only is making it confuse uh, is confusing it because it's not the only thing they do it's not the only thing they do they have more than that to do so the statement is wrong because of this only word management accountant are concerned with more than cost of goods and services and operations such as quality and use of resources so option b will be the right answer which is option uh, assertion 1 is correct on now the next topic is cost i hope you guys are okay uh 
is it too lengthy or is it too boring if you continue to the next topic is it okay with that yes okay yes good okay now next topic is cost uh, as we are discussing again and again that we are using the word of cost then we should know what is cost cost if we don't if we generally see uh, see what is the meaning of cost cost is anything you pay for something is any cost of is any kind of expense you incur so if, if you are working in an organization uh, you should classify your cost you should know which cost is coming under which head so that you can that's how you will be able to control it if you will know the cost is classified in under a certain head then you will then you can see that what are the factors behind it and how you can control it so we are going to learn some general classifications of our cost we can classify a cost by function by element by nature and by behavior we will look into them one by one what is classification by element means that means that you are classifying your cost according to the element of material labor and expenses the cost which are for the purpose of material we will call them material cost similarly the cost which are for the purpose of labor we will say them labor cost will be classify them under the heading of labor cost and the those cost which which cannot be included in the, under the head of material or labor we will call them expenses so if you classify cost according to element it could be material cost labor cost and expenses uh this this is just a general classification you will see these costs coming under the head of other classification of uh, other classification also cost classification by nature under the head of cost classified with uh, classification by nature we will see that there are some costs which are direct and which are indirect but how will you define that these costs are direct and these costs are indirect before going to that topic we have to learn one more important thing which is a cost unit can you differentiate between cost unit and cost per unit can any one of you differentiate between cost unit and cost per unit how you guys think it's same any one of you do you think cost unit and cost per unit is same no one wants to reply achuta devina devya and gitika usha guys do you guys think cost unit and cost per unit same or different Divya is saying she thinks the, uh, both of them are same. Ashutha is confused. What about rest of you? No difference. Okay. Gethika is saying no difference. Okay. So there is a quite a big difference between both of them. As we learned that cost center, we learned cost center recently. what is cost center is a department where we accumulate cost similarly what is a cost unit is that a one unit of your organization is your output is your product with which cost can be attached that means your cost unit is your product is your output why you are saying it cost unit because you are going to relate cost with that output with that unit suppose you are making a you, you are making paint then 1 liter of your paint box will be your cost unit if you are making markers then one marker will be your cost unit 
if you are making laptops then one laptop will be your cost unit why you require to identify that cost unit because you have to know what is the least least cost factor in cost factor involved in your in, in making a product so what is a cost unit cost unit is your product is your output with which cost can be ascertained or with which cost can be attached whereas what is cost per unit cost per unit is cost at that one unit suppose you have to pay you have to incur 20 dollars for making that one liter paint box then 20 dollar for that one liter of paint box is your cost per unit similarly for marker suppose it is 5 dollars and for laptop suppose it is 30 dollars so cost per unit is your cost for that one unit whereas cost unit is that unit is the product itself is the unit itself is it clear yes it should be clear to every one of you because uh, the next topic when yes. is... thanks kritika because the next topic which is uh, direct cost or indirect cost is uh, dependent on the topic of cost unit if you understand what is cost unit then you will understand many of the things okay so cost unit is your output is your product with which cost can be attached whereas cost per unit is the cost of that one unit so what is direct cost and what is indirect cost direct cost is that cost which can be related which can be related to your one unit suppose take an example of marker take an example of marker for that marker you will require some material to make it you will require some labor to convert that marker into the marker form similarly you can have some other expenses to incur suppose 1 dollar for material 1 dollar for labor and 1 dollar for expense your total cost will be 3 dollars so this material this labor and this expense cost which can be directly identifiable to your one unit to your one cost unit is is the direct cost for marker it could be the plastic for uh, for for labor it could be the labor making that marker and you can have an expense you can have a speci uh, specifically you can hire a machine for making that marker that that expense is specifically for making that marker so that is your direct expenses so what are the expenses which are direct all of those expenses which can be directly identifiable with respect to your cost unit with respect to your product will be your direct cost similarly those material cost those labor cost those expenses which cannot be directly identifiable identifiable to your one marker one unit one cost unit those will be your indirect cost why we are saying them indirect cost because these costs cannot be separately identifiable for one marker you can know that there are some material which are directly used in making marker but you you there there could be some other materials which cannot be identifiable to single marker so you call them you classify them under the heading of indirect material uh we can take another example if you are making furniture you are making table then for table what could be the direct material it could be wood it what could be the direct material it could be wood what could be the direct labor the labor involved in directly making that table that would be your direct labor and uh, similarly you uh, may, may, maybe you have some that uh, you have some machinery specifically hired for that ma for making or cutting of that table or wood that will be your direct expense now what could be the indirect material in that table making that nails the nails screws or glue will be your indirect material why glue and nail is indirect although they are directly involved in making 
uh, that table because you cannot directly identifiable how much of glue is involved in that in making that table or how much of the nails are involved in making that table so these costs will be indirect although they are directly involved in making the table but you cannot allocate you cannot identify the cost related to that uh, cost unit so that's why you classify those uh, material as indirect material is it clear yes 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 okay thank you so from this we can conclude that we can have direct material direct labor direct expenses and similarly we can have indirect material indirect labor and indirect expenses so direct costs include direct material direct labor and direct expenses if we add them all then it makes prime cost so if uh, if an examiner asks you to calculate prime cost you have to look for the direct material what is the material which is directly involved in making that uh, cost unit what is the labor cost which is directly involved in making that uh, unit and what are the direct expenses which are directly involved in making that product if we add up all of them it will make prime cost similarly there will be some similarly there will be some uh, indirect cost what are the indirect costs which are involved in manufacturing which are involved in making the product but we cannot directly identify identify those costs to directly uh, those the that your one cost unit so indirect material indirect labor and indirect expenses when add up they make overhead manufacturing overhead we call them manufacturing overhead if you add indirect material indirect labor and indirect expense indirect labor could be some person which is involved in manufacturing but that not directly involved in the uh, making the product it could be a supervisor or like that similarly there could be some expenses which are not identifiable to your one unit that would be called as your indirect expense as i told that direct material direct labor and direct expense makes prime cost similarly indirect material indirect labor and indirect expense makes manufacturing overheads and if you add both of them it makes your total production cost so if in a question examiner asks you to calculate prime cost you simply have to add direct material direct labor and if mentioned uh, any expense then direct expense after that if you are asked to calculate production cost then how you will calculate it by adding the manufacturing overhead in the prime cost you will get to the answer of production cost is it clear guys yes then there is a question in front of you you have to classify them according to the uh, you have to read the statements and classify them whether you are whether the certain statement is about material labor or expense or the certain statement is about direct or indirect cost just take 2 to 3 minutes and uh, kindly send me your answers in the chat box
okay the higher up specific tools or equipment as we uh, as the word specific is mentioning that you are doing something specifically for your course unit so uh, but you cannot define that uh, as a material or as a labor so you will call them expense because you are hiring a spe specific equipment for for your uh, course unit so that will be your expense whether it will be direct or indirect as it is mentioning that it is specifically for your course unit that means that is your direct expense similarly if we talk about rent of the factory can you identify your rent to specifically uh, to your cost unit it is a journal expense all of the units in your organization um, uh, do not depend upon the rent that means you cannot directly identify identify how much part of the rent is related to your one unit so that is your expense but that is your indirect expense why indirect because cannot identifiable to your cost unit similarly supervisor salary is is the labor cost but it is a indirect labor cost because supervisor is not directly involved in making your cost unit similarly oil for lubricating machines um you are manufacturing a cost unit you will be using some machinery but that oil which is lubricating your machinery is not directly related is not directly accountable directly identifiable to your cost unit that how much of the oil cost is involved in that one unit that means that is your material cost but that is not your direct material it is your indirect material similarly wages for a factory workers involved in the production as these are factory workers it will be a labor cost but it will be a direct cost because they are directly involved in production whereas depreciation is your expense and it is indirect expense what is depreciation depreciation is a wear and tear of your asset of your equipment um it is your arbitrary distribution uh, it can it cannot be directly related to your one unit so it is the indirect expense is it clear yes what was the rest of you guys i will highly appreciate your prompt response okay good now there uh, again there are two statements in uh, two questions in front of you um question number 1 is saying which of the following would be classed as indirect labor assembly workers store assistant plasterers in a building company or an audit clerk in an accountancy firm which will be the option guys what will be the option whether a b c or d right option will be a store assistant in a factory store room assembly workers are involved in production they will be involved in making the assembly uh, assembly department will be assembling something you are making so that will be your direct labor plasterers in a building company as it is a building company so plasterers will be the direct labor audit clerk in an accounting firm will be a direct person whereas an assistant in a factory store room will be a indirect labor <coughs> similarly next question is direct cost are cost which can be identifiable to a single unit or a single cost center now what is cost classification by function cost classify by uh, classification by function is classifying it according to the function whether production cost whether non production cost if you are saying production cost you are classifying it by the function of production if you are saying non production cost you are classifying it according to the function of uh, production uh, other than production 
production cost will include direct material direct labor direct expense and some overheads whereas non production cost will include all of the expenses other than production which are administration cost finance cost r and d cost and all that so this is the general classification similarly we can classify costs according to product cost and period cost what is the cost of a product in in a cost of product we can include direct material direct labor direct expenses and manufacturing overhead all of this add up to make production cost as we told earlier then product cost will include all of them whereas period cost will include the cost which are not directly related to product but related to time that will be your admin expenses selling expenses finance cost and some other expenses period cost is related to time whereas product cost is related to your cost unit or your product similarly we uh, discuss already what is controllable and uncontrollable in uh, control measures we said controllable cost is a cost that can be controllable to some extent whereas uncontrollable cost is a cost that cannot be controllable to some extent we can have example we can control material cost and labor cost we can choose the supplier accordingly we can lower down the prices whereas the factory rent is a uh, uh, in this scenario there are some costs which are controllable by a certain manager and not controllable by a, another manager similarly factory rent uh, may not be controllable by your production manager but can be controllable by an admin manager so these are uh, controllable and uncontrollable classification Uh, there is a question in front of you. Solve this question. Read the statements and solve the class and put the answers in the into the classification section.
Okay, I'm getting your options. Um, overalls for machine workers. Overalls for machine workers will come under the heading of classification number one, which is production. Whereas cost of printed printer cartridges will be part of the selling uh, classification. Salary of a factory supervisor will be under the heading of production. Uh, sorry, printer cartridges will be under the heading of administrative, sorry. Whereas uh, salary of factory supervisor, salary of payroll supervisor, uh, uh, will come under the head of production and administrative respectively, whereas the rent of the warehouse of storing will come under the head of distribution. Why? Because the storing goods will be ready for sale. You're going to distribute them. That's why it will be under the head of distribution. Loan will be under the head of finance cost, whereas salary of factory security guard, uh, whether it will be an indirect expense, but it will come under the heading of production cost, a uh, settlement discount will come under the heading of selling cost. Salary of a chairman PA will come under the head of administrative cost, whereas road tax license of a delivery vehicle will come under the head of distribution, whereas overdraft fee will be a finance cost. And similarly, sales commission will come under the heading of selling cost. Uh, Klaus, this is a question in front of you. This is your assignment. You can solve it uh, afterwards and uh, then we will discuss it in the next class. And uh, up till uh, we will discuss uh, the further topics in the next class. You can take a screenshot. I will send you afterwards also, but you can uh, take a screenshot also. Um, and uh, you have to solve this question. Is it clear, guys? We will uh, continue to the next topics in the next class. Is everyone clear about that? Yes. 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 Okay, guys, then take care and uh, see you in the next class.